one that we've just opened tonight was called Where Are We? And it's all about place names in New Zealand and some of the stories behind how those names have come about. The idea first came to me to create this exhibition, to curate it, when I heard Peter Darling talking about place names in New Zealand in the new book that's just been launched, the revised R.W. Reid book of place names in New Zealand. Place names themselves are a sort of a nexus which join history, uh, the stories of the people who have lived, geography uh, and language and landform and bring them all together. And in terms of uh, defining a sense of belonging, they're, they're fairly integral. I wanted to have some quite serious works here that were quite historical works as well as some quite playful works. So we've got some um, works like the Lawrence Aberhart's photograph of Pau Pau flags, which were very early tribal flags, which I think say a lot about place as well. And then we've got very playful works like, like John Reynolds that are playing with our neuroses behind names and, and signings and where we're from. So there's, there's, there's a bit of humour in it, and there's a bit of seriousness and some history. Okay, so this installation is based on a collection um, by a woman called Lady Penelope Putti Putti Simcock. There was this inference in her notebook that there were plans in the 1800s before the terraces, the pink and white terraces, exploded to build a model power for the tourists so that people could come and experience the terraces with the buildings on it, like the traditional Māori way of living. This artwork here, um, Auckland Wellington, a lot of my work over the last few years has been about trying to dis decide whether to stay in a location or go somewhere else. So a lot of my artwork is to do with decision making and whether to remain in a place or take certain aspects of a particular location with the traveller as they depart to go to another place. I've also done a lot of work recently to do with keys, which is about having a sense of belonging and whether to um, remain or have access to a particular location or, or whether to go somewhere else and belong in that location instead. The maps or the plane passing over again is to do with taking that particular location or leaving with aspects of that location. work was very much an exploration of the history of the area of, of Titarangi. So she, she uncovered a lot of stories behind like the, the plant, the Hebe speciosa plant, Titarangi, and whether the area is named after the plant or the plant after the area. When it's in flower, it has a bright red flower. It would have been visible from quite a distance. And so if it was called Te Ara Te Te Rangi, you have to imagine walking through a pathway of red flowers. And he is the person who Mount Atkinson is named after. I made him a cloak to acknowledge his gift to the people of Auckland. I've taken the cloak from the man and made another work called Mantle for a Small Maunga. So it really is to try and restore some of that mana back to that mountain, which people have forgotten. And that up there is the fringe of heaven, which is what all the locals say Tithrangi means. I was interested in shooting at night to really push that sense of the, uh, of the mixed lighting that you get when you're shooting at night, but getting all of these sort of movement, so that there's a sense of a sense of movement and so some kind of trace of Tanifa within the space, yeah. So try to activate something about Tanifa within it and to acknowledge the importance of a name within a city environment. And I don't know why Tanifa Street was named in that particular place, but I just really like that it traversed from quite a wealthy area through to a poorer housing area and that it uh, provided a pathway. same exhibition as Shane Cotton and Rosalie Gasroyd and you know all these really famous people with what essentially equates to a kind of false artifact and they've all created these amazing artworks. So there's a, there's a little bit, I feel quite humble about that.
Um, and also the nature of my practice is that it's always quite shonky to look at. Um, so, you know, the materials are very cheap materials and it's kind of throwaway. But there's a little bit of magic in it as well. The idea that you could imagine this being a reality is the important thing, I think. I've been really fortunate that places like Auckland Art Gallery have been very supportive and quite a few of the works come from there and also from the University of Auckland and several of the Auckland dealer galleries and individual artists that have loaned the work too. So um, the works will be here for 10 weeks right through until February and hopefully it'll get people thinking about where they're from too and thinking about the stories behind how those names came about.